The main components of a centrifugal pump are 1. The pump's impeller. This is the component that transfers the energy from the pump's driver to the liquid. 2. The pump casing. In radial flow pumps, the pump casing is where the kinetic energy given to the liquid by the impeller is transformed into higher liquid pressure. In axial flow pumps, the pump casing is simply the pipe in which the impeller rotates. 3. The shaft of the pump on which the impeller is mounted. The shaft of the pump is connected to the shaft of the pump's driver by means of a rigid or flexible coupling. 4. The bearings that support the shaft of the pump. 5. The mechanical seals and packing that prevent leakage from the pump. The impeller, is the component of the pump, that transfers power from the pump's motor, to the fluid. The impeller pushes the fluid with its blades, and hence increases the kinetic energy of the flow. The flow pressure is also increased by the impeller. Impellers of centrifugal pumps can be classified into the following types. 1. Straight vane radial flow impellers. Like the one shown here. In this type of impeller, the impeller vanes appear as curved lines that are extruded along a straight line that is parallel to the axis of the impeller. 2. Francis vane impellers. This type of impeller is sometimes also called a screw vane impeller. 3. Mixed flow impellers. And 4. Axial flow impellers. Impellers for radial flow centrifugal pumps can be of various types depending on their design. Every design has certain advantages that will be discussed next. There are three main types of radial centrifugal pump impeller designs, open, semi-open, and closed. Open impellers consist of only vanes attached to a central hub. They do not have any shroud attached to them. Their main advantages are that they are cheap to manufacture and are suited for handling stringy liquids since they do not clog easily. The disadvantages of open impellers include their structural weakness that is caused by the fact that the impeller vanes are not strengthened with a shroud. Another disadvantage of open impellers is that they have to rotate within close tolerance of the pump casing to minimize fluid slippage. Slippage occurs when the liquid is allowed to cross an impeller blade through the small clearance that exists between the impeller and the casing wall. Slippage reduces the efficiency of the pump. Even a small amount of wear between the impeller and casing would cause a large decrease in the pumping efficiency. In case there is no wear plate between the impeller and the pump casing, if excessive wear occurs on the two side surfaces that are between the impeller and the casing, then the entire pump must be replaced. To provide better tolerances, the open impeller usually rotates between two stationary wear plates. If the impeller or the plates wear out, then they can be replaced without having to replace the whole pump. Due to the clearance that must exist between the impeller and the side plates to allow the impeller to rotate, a certain amount of slippage will always occur. Some open impeller designs use a partial shroud to strengthen the impeller vanes. This would allow the impeller to operate at higher speeds without structurally overloading the impeller's vanes. Semi-open impellers have a single shroud on their backside and are opened on the other. The open side of the impeller rotates against the pump casing or a stationary wear plate connected to the pump casing. Semi-open impellers are structurally stronger than their open counterparts. Yet they also suffer from wear and fluid slippage on the impeller side where there is no shroud.
Some impellers have balancing holes drilled into their back sides. These serve to balance the pressure between the back side and the front side of the impeller's shroud. Without the balancing holes, the pressure on the back side of the impeller will be equal to the discharge pressure while the pressure on the front of the shroud is equal to the intake pressure. In this case, the impeller would pull on its shaft towards the inlet nozzle, direction because of the pressure difference. The balancing holes hence increase the life of the pump's bearings by reducing the bearing's axial load. Closed impellers have shrouds on both sides of the impeller. They are the impellers of choice in most centrifugal pump applications. Closed impellers are also called enclosed impellers or shrouded impellers. A closed impeller uses a cylindrical running joint to separate the impeller's discharge from the intake. This running joint or ring that forms the leakage joint can be repaired much more cheaply than replacing the impeller in open or semi-open designs after too much wear has occurred. The double shroud design eliminates fluid slippage on both sides of the impeller, and hence reduces wear and increases the pump's efficiency. Closed impellers can be of the single suction type, where the fluid enters the impeller from a single side. In this case, balancing holes are placed on the opposing side to make sure the pressure on the impeller is balanced. The fluid flows from both sides along the impeller's axis into double suction closed impellers. The flow then makes a 90 degree turn and exits the impeller in a radial direction. Double suction impellers are well balanced in terms of the pressure on both sides of the impeller. The two intake streams in double suction impellers are usually separated by a double conical wall that directs both streams towards a radial direction. This is a Francis Vane impeller. This is a mixed flow impeller. This is an axial flow impeller. The inducer is a screw-shaped impeller. The inducer is mounted on the same shaft, and rotates at the same speed as the main impeller. The purpose of the inducer is to increase intake pressure of the main impeller. This reduces the liquid's tendency to cavitate within the main impeller by reducing the pump's required net positive suction head or NPSH. For more information on the topics of cavitation and the NPSH, please click on the shown link.